All right, welcome into episode nine of Taking the Field now. Uh, I want to get to some thoughts on some Big Ten college football uh, from this past season and kind of give you my thoughts on really Michigan's football program and kind of coming to terms with reality in respect to that. And I, I had some thoughts on Michigan under Jim Harbaugh and the sort of rivalry with OSU. And really, I think the rivalry is dead at this point. I mean, Ohio State's won, what, eight straight now? But after last season, I kind of came to terms with the fact that Michigan likely won't be an elite program in the foreseeable future. But not too many teams are nowadays, maybe five or six at most. And I think all others kind of fall under the category of very good to good, decent, or just flat out bad. And I think Michigan happens to reside in the first. They're consistently 10 and 2, 10 and 3. And I can live knowing that they won't really beat Ohio State with everything else considered. Being that they're 10 and 2 every year, they're a top 4 or 5 team in the conference every year, they're a top 15 team in the country every year. They'll have a chance at a New Year's Day bowl almost every single year, which they really need to start winning their bowl games because they've lost the last three. And I know that some people want championships and they want the rings and things like that, but I think all things considered, it could be a lot worse. And I know that a lot of people will say that that's kind of a cop-out and things like that. And I guess to a certain degree, they're kind of right. But to say that we're not an elite program now doesn't mean that they can't be elite in the next, you know, four, five, six years or something. Because really, in my opinion, Jim Harbaugh is not going anywhere. Because you hear all the time these coaching positions become available and he's, if not the top choice, supposedly, he's supposedly in the top five or something like that of one of the top candidates for that job, which I just think is absolutely ridiculous. And I've talked about that on previous episodes, but the bottom line is he's not going anywhere and people just need to understand that. And a certain national sports station kind of put it into people's heads that the expectation from day one needed to be getting those championships and beating Ohio State, but what they conveniently kind of overlooked was the fact that Michigan at the time was in no way, shape, or form designed to win at that level, which what seems like they don't understand is that kind of stuff takes time to build. And in some cases, it can take more than, you know, four or five years to build that. But now they kind of live to be able to put Harbaugh and the program down every opportunity they get. One of the more recent examples was a few weeks ago, Michigan's basketball team jumped in the rankings from unranked to number four in the nation. Now, rather than talk about the fact that this was tied for, I believe, the biggest leap in the rankings in the last 60 years or so, this station chose to talk about Jim Harbaugh losing to Ohio State and Ohio State winning the last eight games in the rivalry while they were supposed to be doing a show talking about releasing the college basketball AP Top 25 poll and discussing that. I'm not really sure as a college football and college basketball fan who, who pays attention to a lot of this stuff, I'm not really sure how that makes any sense to the topic that you were supposed to have been discussing. I mean, there's a time and a place to discuss those kinds of things. During the college basketball AP Top 25 poll was probably not one of them. But, but again, they saw the opportunity to take their shots and they took it. But... Michigan still has work to do if they want to be able to get to that elite level. And I don't really think that they're anywhere near being finished with that process. If that's where they're trying to go, I'd say they're more kind of in the middle right now of that process, but they do have a lot more to work towards. So that's kind of where they are and where they're going. But let's kind of take a look back at the decade that was for some of these Big Ten football teams because Fox Sports posted a graphic on Instagram the other day showing the rankings between the Big Ten East and West 
of the overall Big Ten records for each team in the Big Ten for the past decade. And to absolutely no one's surprise, Ohio State finished with the best record in the Big Ten um, for the decade with a record of 74-10. and 10. Wisconsin was the best in the West with a 64-20 and 20 record. And really, I think that this graphic kind of reaffirmed what we kind of already knew and that's that the east division is the better division of the two by far i mean the east division had four teams with 50 or more wins being ohio state michigan state penn state and michigan and the west only had one such team which was wisconsin iowa finished 48 and something so, but they didn't finish with over 50 wins. So only the West had only one team with 50 or more. And when you really look at it, the fourth best team in the East, which happened to be Michigan, would actually have finished second in the West. Teams two through four in the East behind Ohio State, which were Michigan State, Penn State, and Michigan, would have finished second to Wisconsin in the West in front of Iowa. And I tweeted the graphic out from Fox Sports uh, the other day saying, do with this what you will. And I got some feedback on it. One comment said, what do I see? The number four team in the East is better than the number two team in the West. Hashtag realign. And that's kind of something I have already pointed to in this discussion. But I really think that this is the answer to this statistic. I mean, when you talk about realignment and kind of the divisions itself and you you look at the teams that have been going to the Big Ten Championship game year in and year out, the Big Ten Championship game started in 2011. In that time, Wisconsin and Ohio State have combined for 11 appearances in the Big Ten Championship game over that time. And in those 11 appearances, they've matched up with each other three of those times and OSU has gone the last three years winning all three and in those three games that they've won they have faced Wisconsin two out of the three the title game needs to see some shakeup only seven of the 14 Big Ten teams have really made it to the championship game three of which have gone multiple times out of Wisconsin and Ohio State, the other one being Michigan State has gone twice. Maybe three times. Um, but another commenter said, What I see here is that Ohio State has been winning an 88% clip for a decade, and Fox, ESPN, and many others seriously think that anything below that is mediocre or average. A genuine and extreme lack of perspective. And I don't really take it as a direct attack on any of the other schools in the Big Ten outside of Ohio State. I don't think it's really an attack on their programs and, you know, them not winning or not winning enough necessarily. I think it was, I took it more just as what it is, a, stat a statistical uh, representation of how each team did this decade. And I think in some cases it was kind of eye-opening to see some of the Big Ten team's records for the decade because maybe you thought that a certain team would have more wins than they did or you're surprised that a team had as many wins as they did. So I think it kind of just helped put it a little bit more into perspective. Um, and as I mentioned when I tweeted the graphic, again, courtesy of Fox Sports, I said, do with this what you will. I wasn't really trying to control the narrative or anything like that around it, as this commenter believes that Fox Sports was trying to do. I was really just kind of allowing people to make their own observations as I made my own. And the same commenter then said... If Michigan was in the West the entire decade, they'd have gone to Indy at least three, if not all five years of Jim Harbaugh's tenure and would have been there once with Brady Hoke. It's very telling. And I think it would have been more like two times, maybe three at most with Harbaugh so far. You wouldn't or you would have had to beat Wisconsin to get to Indy, I think. And you are two and two against them in the last four years. You've played them each of the last four years. Um, you would have gone in 2016 and 2018 probably for sure if you were in the West because those are the two years that you beat Wisconsin. 
but that's probably about it. You could make a case that they would have gone in 2015 with Jake Rudock, but at least for sure it would have been 16 and 18. And then he mentions going once with Brady Hoke. You could probably make the argument that they go in 2011 when they finished 11 and 2 overall for the entire season. But that's a debate that we can have on a later episode if you would like. But I do think that the commenter is right, though. If Michigan were in the West from the jump, they probably are talked about as a program in a much more flattering way. But the Big Ten, I think, will never realign in a way that it will that would allow something like this to happen, where you would see a team like Michigan go over to the West, because I think in a way it would almost be like rewarding Michigan for not being able to win the East and, you know, not being able to beat Ohio State, which even I think if they went to the West, they'd probably still have to play the Buckeyes. But still, I feel like you would kind of be almost like rewarding Michigan for never beating them and never winning the East. Um, But then when you look at some of the other teams that you could possibly move there, you know, Michigan State kind of looks like they're on the decline now from where they were in the early to mid stages of the decade. So you wouldn't really want to move them to the West because they wouldn't have as much of an impact as they would have four or five, six years ago as they would now. And you wouldn't really dare to put Ohio State in the West because they own the Big Ten, especially in the East. So if you move them to the West, it's just going to be worse off for everybody else. And in fact, I think you almost make it easier for them to get to Indy if you move them to the West. And then geographically speaking, Penn State's too far east for it to make any sense to move them to the West. So really, if there were to be any sort of realignment, you would almost have to go with Michigan in that case. But as I mentioned, the Big Ten wouldn't do that because you'd essentially be rewarding them for winning nothing for the past 10 years. So that'll do it for episode 9 of Taking the Field. A quick reminder to like, comment, and share on this post. And check out past episodes of the podcast on my website, takingthefield.com. That's taking-the-field.com. Or Google Taking the Field with Stevie Mac. You can also follow me on Twitter where I talk a lot about sports. And you can see that image that I posted from Fox Sports that was on today's episode at Stevie Mac Media. I also have a Facebook page for the podcast at TTFW Stevie Mac. And that'll do it for episode nine of Taking the Field. Thanks for listening.